Hey guys, it's Two Bricks, and I just wanted to bring you guys a quick tips and tricks and tutorial kind of video today to show you a technique that I have used a lot to create really strong but fairly narrow structures, like for example, the neck of the Nebulon B frigate, which I showed in a previous video, and that is uh, a structure that is relatively thin but is able to support a ton of weight and is extremely sturdy and so if you guys are building uh, slightly larger you know mocks and uh, models there might be a time where you want to have a super duper strong spine that can be built upon and so i just wanted to show you guys uh, what i would do in that situation today so the first thing that i would start with if i wanted to create something like that is these Technic uh, beams or Technic bricks, um, the reason that they're super handy versus your regular Lego bricks is the fact that they have these handy dandy holes in them, obviously. So what makes that useful is that when you plug in a Technic pin uh, or two, you're able to create something that can be extended without any major loss of strength at the connection point. Whereas when you're building something um, say you're using these bricks and you want to you know shore up this structure you're always going to have this gap where uh, it isn't um, you know you're gonna have kind of a weak point where those two pieces meet and uh, the same can be said if you're using you know one buys and you try to stack them up in the same way and you kind of eliminate a little bit of that gap yes that's true but I always find that it's a little bit more sturdy if you can connect them together with pins so I would start by building my main structure down the middle using these Technic beams. Uh, I always call them beams, I don't know why. They, they kind of look more like construction beams, I guess, but you know, Technic bricks. And uh, in that way, you're just kind of creating a really sturdy central base for what is gonna accommodate all of the weight of your structure. And you know, it has a lot of flex to it right now, uh, but that's something that can, the, uh, that will change once we uh, put in all of the other elements and then you know as long as you want to make it you just keep adding beams <clears throat> and if you have a, a really unlimited supply of these Technic pins you can always put more of them as well uh, down the middle uh, I don't find that that's usually that necessary a couple of pins will hold uh, everything together pretty well but yeah as many pins as you feel that you want to add you can go ahead and do that and then what I start doing is essentially taking these bracket pieces, which come in a, a huge different variety, and um, basically just lining the outside of my, of my structure Oops. Uh, with these bracket pieces. So I, or I try to actually alternate um, ones that go above and ones that go below the line. Because the way that these were designed, it's very handy. You can plug them into the top or bottom of a brick, and they will still line up along the middle. So basically what you're going to try to do is either you take your one buys and you put them above and below the beam or you take your top attaching ones or your bottom and you essentially just alternate all the way down the structure and that gives you a whole row of studs along the side but what it also gives you is this kind of clamping effect where the ones on the top and the bottom are going to be held into place once we apply plates to the side. So in, uh, in clamping all of that together, we now have a structure that is held, pinched from the top and the bottom, and any kind of flex that would happen in there is being eliminated um, by having that, uh, clamping it in on the side. And then I just do the same thing on the other side. I'll try to kind of match them up a little bit. Uh, let's see, this one here. Uh, oops. Well, I guess I've created a tricky situation for myself. Let's see, put this one down here. And then uh, once you have, you know, I won't demonstrate the entire length of the thing, but once you have enough coverage above and below, you can then clamp the other side in using your plates. And just like an I-beam that would be used as the kind of support structure for like a skyscraper, it's the same exact idea where any any direction that the um, the twist or the bend or the, the breaking force would come from is being mitigated by the way that you have this structure built. And then what I do is just fill in the gaps uh, in between the oops in between the different bracket structures on top because it'll leave it'll leave you with some gaps. I want this going. Come on now. There we go. Um, and I just like to use colors that I'm 
that I have a lot of or that I'm you know not super attached to. Uh, I think the inside of most of my builds is fairly rainbow colored. And uh, you don't have to fill in every single gap, but I like to get as much of it as I can just because it gives you a nice uniform strength to the whole thing. And then again, you just clamp that in by adding a piece across the top like that. Same goes for the bottom. And I'll just put a couple in to show you guys, but you get the idea by now. Cap a couple at the end, filling in all those gaps, and then place a plate over the top. And so this structure right here is essentially unbreakable. <laughs> I mean, if, if I was to try to bend this, I'd probably have an easier time bending a piece of steel than this right here. And uh, if you're making something like, say, uh, if you do like model weapons, like you know, swords, blades, uh, guns, anything that's meant to be handled a lot and is meant to be structurally sturdy, this is something that will come in really, really handy. And uh, for my Star Wars ships, I know that when they get a little bit larger in scale, this is something that I use uh, often. Uh, even if I'm not actually attaching anything to the sides of these, I might just put plates along the side of this, um, in, or I'm sorry, tiles, uh, if I'm not planning to use any sideways building. If I just want something that holds on to the top and bottom um, or kind of will just sit in the center of a model, uh, I would still use a technique like this because it really does give unparalleled strength to your builds. So there you go guys, that's the technique. It's fairly simple uh, but it's really really useful and if you guys want more tips and tricks videos don't forget to subscribe and if you like the video go ahead and like it and leave me a thumbs up or a comment let me know what you think and uh, yeah I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.